This is a Gazzetta del Sud, a locally produced newspaper only in the south of Italy, and I have the edition Catanzaro, Crotone, Lamezia Vibo. Now you may be asking yourself, well, these aren't places in Puglia, and you'd be correct, because today we're in Calabria. Pizzo is an ancient fortified town built on a cliff on the Tyrrhenian Sea. It overlooks what locals call La Costa degli Dei, the coast of the gods. And I'm here today because I found three dream homes in its historical center. But let me show you Pizzo, starting in Piazza della Repubblica, its main square which overlooks the sea, but which also charms the visitor for its typical buildings and monuments. The square is also lined with amazing restaurants and gelaterie. Pizzo, in fact, is famous for its gelato tradition, but more on that point a bit later. Here, the scent of the air is a mix of sea breeze and local cuisine. My kind of place. So Pizzo, beautiful city, on a cliff, fortified in medieval times, overlooking the Mediterranean Sea. It's said to have its origins in the Magna Grecia period. So when Greece was colonizing the Mediterranean, even before the Romans, it was said to have been founded by a Greek hero called Nepeto. And so the inhabitants of Pizzo are called the Napitini. Uh, really, really beautiful, and I'm excited to explore some more. My next stop is to Castello Murat a defensive military castle built by the Spanish in 1492. It's famous for being where Napoleon's appointed king of Naples, Joaquino Murat, was held prisoner and executed while trying to retake the throne after Napoleon's defeat. Before moving on, I wanted to talk about one of the easiest ways it's possible to live in Italy full-time as a foreigner. By becoming Italian. Did you know Italian citizenship can be reclaimed by any descendant of an Italian ancestor with only a few conditions? However, the first step in the process is organizing your family tree to understand the lines of descent. This is where the sponsor of today's video, MyHeritage, can be of immense help. MyHeritage is the leading global service for family history research and has powerful tools to help you document your family tree, having over 19 billion easily searchable historical records. So I was glad to partner with them since their platform could be a useful tool for any of you viewers interested in knowing more about your heritage and family history. I signed up myself and found myself having lots of fun fleshing out my family tree. With a few easy steps, I filled in basic information about myself my parents and grandparents, and my heritage does the rest from there. There's a fantastic feature called Instant Discoveries, which links information from their massive database. And so with a single click, I was able to import generations worth of information about my family members instead of having to track it down and write it in myself. Another thing I had fun with was the AI tool for images, which can repair, colorize, and animate historical family photos. So if you're documenting your family history while trying to get your Italian passport, or for any other reason, the 19 billion records that MyHeritage puts at your fingertips is a massive resource. Click on the link below to sign up for a 14-day free trial and enjoy all the amazing features MyHeritage has to offer. If you decide to continue your subscription, you'll get a 50% discount. For lunch, I've chosen one of the top-rated restaurants in town, Pepe Nero. Okay, so this is the antipasto. This is a, a codfish in tempura. Looks absolutely spectacular with dried tomatoes, almonds. Oh my god. This is next level. Next level fried fish. Wow. Okay, so next we have homemade ravioli. The owner came to me and said she made them herself this morning and it's uh, filled with a burrata with a um, shellfish bisque and shrimp. It just keeps getting better and better. Okay, and so as the second course, we have fried mini octopus. Spectacular. This is Pepe Nero in Pizzo, five stars. 
So Pizzo is known as the city of gelato. There are gelaterie to either side of me all over the place. And it's famous for the gelato truffle. So it looks like a big truffle with a chocolate in the inside. And so that's definitely what I'm gonna go and have now. Oh my God. So it's pistachio ice cream on the outside with a pistachio cream on the inside and it's covered completely with pistachio. So it's, if you like pistachio, this is the one for you. <laughs> Okay, so we've made it to the house that we're visiting today. Very special, very historical, with views over Pizzo and lots of potential. Really excited about this one. Let's go inside and see. So this is the first tour of our three home tour in Pizzo. Uh, as you can see on the map, today we're going with a peperoncino instead of a tarallo to follow us around, and that's because we're in Calabria and not in Puglia. The asking price is 180,000, and it's a total of 236 meters square. So the tour starts off in this big open space, which is the living room, kitchen, dining room, for the downstairs area. Now we'll see that the upstairs and downstairs can be two separated as two different living units or it can be used as one big house. Now this house really oozes charm as you can see from the exterior. It's very, has a very typical uh, architectural style to it with it, which is very Italian, I'd say, very Southern Italian, but it does need restructuring. It needs to be renovated uh, if you wanted it to be, for example, a B&B, &B, this would be perfect for a B&B &B or for uh, living in. So as we enter into this other hallway, we've seen that there's the closet area for a washing machine. Uh, you have to the right the outdoor terrace, which we'll see in a bit, and uh, two bedrooms here uh, downstairs. So this is bedroom one, the smaller of the two bedrooms. This house, I think, is characterized by how much light it receives. So on the downstairs, you have these big windows. Uh, and we'll see upstairs these splendid balconies with gorgeous views. But as you can see, it is a, a, a well-spaced uh, bedroom. And you have the window looking out to pizza below and the sea. You do have a built-in closet. There is heating in the whole building, so there's already the radiators in each room with a centralized heating unit, which may have to be replaced. And this is the second bedroom, the bigger of the two downstairs. Once again, a spacious bedroom. You have a window facing the same direction looking down, so it's very similar to the other uh, bedroom right next door. A uh, point to mention of this house, uh, within the street below, there is a construction which can be converted into a garage, giving you a parking space uh, below the house, right on the street. But let's now head back into the hallway, and I wanted to show you the this downstairs terrace that you have. It is a spacious terrace. Now, obviously, in a house like this, you don't, don't have an outdoor yard. We are, you know, right in the city center or right outside the city center, really. Um, but you do have this gorgeous terrace space. And you also have that uh, piazzetta in front of the house, which is basically closed off 
um, among the surrounding buildings. So it's a common space that can be used together with neighbors. But this area itself is nice. It uh, needs to be refreshed like the rest of the house, but you do have attachments for water coming out, for example. And we do have the downstairs bathroom, which is here to the right, with attachments for a toilet, shower, sink. It's a functional bathroom for the downstairs. And we'll see that there's another bathroom upstairs as well, which is a bit bigger. But now we're gonna go back around. We'll have one last look at the living room and we'll head up the stairs to see the upstairs. So the stairs are in solid stone, and so perhaps this is something that wouldn't have to be uh, renovated so much. And this is my favorite part of the house, this upstairs. Now here you have the possibility of having four different bedrooms or structuring it in such a way that you have a living room uh, a kitchen and a couple of bedrooms. So if you were to separate it into a, a different living unit, you have everything possible to do that up here as well. So this is what is currently bedroom number one. Here we have the balcony overlooking the little, what I call the piazzetta, so the little square that we entered in from below. You can see that's the main entrance. And it does give us a view to the right of the sea. The most charming part of this house, I, I believe, is definitely these upstairs bedrooms with these gorgeous balconies, which give us this these, these views overlooking Pizzo. We'll head into this little hallway and I'll show you what is currently set up as kind of a secondary kitchen up here and you have a space in the attic for storage. It's currently being used as storage, although that can probably be renovated as well. Heading back into the hallway, we'll see the second half of this upstairs. This is the bigger bathroom area. As you can see, this has enough space for a bidet as well as the shower, uh, a big sink. And so yes, this uh, space obviously has to be completely redone. And here is a possible dining room or, once again, a gorgeous bedroom with views overlooking Pizzo. So let's have a look from here. You can see Pizzo is built on a big incline. Uh, and so you have this cliff overlooking the sea. From here we have a view of that central square in Pizzo below, but also of the churches, the housetops, and DC in front of us. This room is at an angle, so we have balconies in both of these directions, both to the side and to the front that we just saw. Really the amount of light that you're getting in this house I think makes it unique. A lot of the houses in southern Italy, and people have commented as well, uh, don't have as much lighting as you would get in houses in northern Italy or especially in northern Europe. Uh, but this is a bit of an exception. Here you get a lot of light, natural light coming in, and you are benefited with the gorgeous views that accompany these balconies. And so here's a look at what is the last bedroom upstairs before we head downstairs for a bit of a surprise. So this is the, the house of the neighbor downstairs on the street. Really, really interesting. He uh, renovates uh, historical fiat cars and so he's let me into his garage to kind of show you what he has it's really uh, a blast of the past so this is the innards of the cinquecento he renovates them entirely so he just got the the outside and this is the new engine he takes this uh, out for drives along the coast on pizza I could just imagine how amazing this would be this is the second garage, the Vespa, another Cinquecento, and then this is his uh, Fiat for going into the mountain.
Okay, so I'm on my way now to the second house, really gorgeous. And the streets to get there, the alleyways are absolutely stunning. So I'm going to give you a tour until the apartment, uh, which I think you will appreciate. So this is the apartment here. This is the view overlooking the sea. And it's positioned gorgeously within these historic streets and alleyways going up and down Pizzo. So you can see here the tight little streets. And I'll just give you, before we go up, right over here, I'll give you a look here at the sea and the view that we have. This is a historical palazzo. And here you can see the, the view overlooking. There's Pizzo. And we have the sea. This is called uh, the beach of Seggiola. And I don't think you get, it gets much better than this. Okay. So now on to the apartment. Okay, so the second house we're going to be seeing is up here at the top floor. Absolutely gorgeous, completely renovated, and with some of the best views I've seen in a long time in a house. Let's go and have a look. So this home is on the second and final floor of this building. It is 80 square meters, although that does actually feel a bit bigger than that while you're in there. And the asking price is 220000 Now we'll see... Uh, in contrast to the previous home that we saw, this house is already perfectly renovated. Uh, we'll see that in every detail and angle of the house. It's 100% renovated. You can come and live in it immediately, or you can do uh, what the current owners are doing and set it up as a B and B solution. So let's have a look. This is the kitchen. What is currently the kitchen, we have the balconies uh, behind me at the moment. Now that wall in the back can actually be knocked down, so this can be turned into a kitchen living room area. Whereas currently we have three bedrooms to uh, maximize occupancy of the house for B&B purposes. This is being used as a closet to store cleaning materials, but it's a perfectly renovated bathroom which could be uh, the, the bathroom for the, the living space, if that's how you wanted to rearrange uh, the structure. You can see this one as well is a very luminous house. We have the balconies, we have the doors, and the details, I believe, are gorgeous. You have this blue and white theme, which I think is perfect for Pizzo, as you do have the, those natural blues of the sea all around you. Now we'll go into the hallway to have a look at the sleeping area. So we do have three bedrooms, and each bedroom actually has a bathroom associated to it. So this would be bedroom number one. Each bedroom does have uh, windows providing plenty of light. You do have TVs installed, you have heating and air conditioning all throughout. And you'll see each one of the bathrooms has been uh, meticulously done, very clean, very new. I think they did a, a very impressive job with the renovation. Uh, I've mentioned before that the tiles uh, are my weak point. I, I really like these decorative tiles in a Mediterranean style. The walls and 
The rest are painted white, so everything does stay nice and light and airy. Then we'll head into now the second bedroom. Each bedroom has a name associated to uh, Pete. So this, this is Sejola, which is that little beach with the boats we saw before entering in. This bedroom benefits from a window overlooking the sea. So you do have a very romantic air to it with the clay uh, roof tiles of the neighboring houses and that sea in front, which is ever present in Pete. So. And behind us, we also have the bathroom associated with this bedroom. Once again, perfectly renovated, very clean. This has a, they all have bidets, toilets, showers, and a sink. And then we'll have a look at the last bedroom. This is the biggest bedroom of the three, so it could be a a padiglione, that's the, the view that we have from the other side of the fjord. There's a little square there called padiglione. And so this is the biggest bedroom I was saying. And this bedroom also has, in addition to the gorgeous uh, window overlooking the sea, you also have the balcony, which does connect to the kitchen we saw on the other side. But first, we'll have a look into this bathroom as well. Great details in this one, too. And then the high point of this apartment is the views from this little terrace. Very romantic. This is, this is very unique. And I think this is the, the high point for this apartment for me. You have view, views of the fjord below you, pizza on one side, and the sea in front. So this was house number two. Let's go to house number three. Okay, so we're on our way to the third and final house. Sorry for the noise. There's a bit of construction, I think, in this house behind me. But I wanted to do like we did with the previous one and show you the street because we're literally right behind the city center and we're on the street parallel to it. Let's go see. So the house is located on the same street as the cathedral. So let's have a quick look inside. The cathedral is dedicated to St. George and it was built in 1632. It's a Baroque style church with gorgeous ceiling paintings, really beautiful sculptures, and it's also the resting place of the Napoleonic King Gioacchino Murat, who I spoke of when visiting the castle. But going down the street now, uh, let me tell you a bit more about Pizzo. It has a population of 8,000, and so it would fall within the cities of Southern Italy where you'd be benefiting from a 7% flat tax if you chose to uh, relocate to Pizzo. Like I mentioned before, it's famous for its gelato, and so it's known as the Città del Gelato. And it also has a famous reputation as being one of the main beach locales in this province of Vibo Valencia, together with Tropea, the very famous Tropea, and Capo Vaticano. The nearest airport is 30 kilometers away, so very close, La Mezia Terme, which has Italian and other European destinations. So we've arrived to the gate, which opens up into the area of the house. So you can already see this house is something special, where you had other houses right on this old central street of Pizzo, this house has its own private area surrounding it. So it has 116 meters squared of this 
kind of upstairs uh, parking area, garden area. And below, you have a private garden of 120 square meters. So this is a very special property. There's not too many times in the center of a town, a historical town with limited space like Pizzo, where you have your own private garden. But anyways, let's enter into the main building. It is 110 meters squared, and the asking price is 210,000 euros. So this upstairs consists in this kitchen, dining, living room area. Everything does have to be renovated. I believe this is all from the 1970s. So it does have a retro charm to it. But you would be better off, in my opinion, uh, modernizing it. You do have uh, a spacious bathroom here in the back with a bathtub, bidet, toilet and sink and one bedroom upstairs. We'll see also that there's a separated downstairs, uh, which has entry from the garden. So this is the main bedroom. Very spacious with the, with the doors opening up onto the that portico terrace in front. So the house does have heating installed. and even mosquito nets. And you do have this look down onto your private garden, which if I'm not mistaken has lemon trees and olive trees. So let me take you now downstairs so you can have a closer look at the garden and the lower floor of the building. So I can imagine setting up a table down here, a big long table and having a big lunch with extended family and friends, Italian style. And you have a picturesque setting here among the lemon trees. So there is air conditioning in the house as well. And we'll enter into the bottom floor. Once again, this floor does have to be renovated as well. You have a, a bedroom here to the right, a kind of inner bedroom with storage space in the back of it that is currently being used to uh, store garden equipment and a bit of a cubby area. And then we'll see we have the kitchen there in the back and a second bedroom as well. So in total, we have three bedrooms, two downstairs, one upstairs. The house does have plenty of space. And here is a, a second kitchen and the bathroom. Obviously, if you're using this as a one family unit, you really only need the kitchen dining room upstairs and this little area in front of the downstairs bathroom can be turned into something else. So the bathroom is functional, although it does need to be modernized with the rest of the house. And even here on the bottom floor, you do have plenty of light coming in from your garden. So let's head back outside to have one last look at the garden. I did want to thank all of my patrons on Patreon. If you haven't seen it, please check it out and consider supporting the channel. Uh, if you haven't yet, subscribe, like, and comment below. What was your favorite house out of these three? What did you think about Pizzo and this special episode coming from Calabria? Let me know if there's anything else that you'd like to see in Calabria or in any other location in Italy. Ciao!